Hey everybody, welcome back to part number two of the real replacement. Part number one, we just kind of got things set up, got the cutting unit off the drive unit, went ahead and compared the old reel and the new reel and talked a little bit about that. And compared the differences in my cutting unit versus a newer cutting unit where there might be some part differences and you need to look out for that. And I showed you how to identify those. Today in part number two, we're taking that bed bar off, removing the real bearing housings and getting the reel out of there. Pretty straightforward process on how to do it. You gotta pay attention though to a few parts that you don't wanna lose. I stress that heavily throughout the video. So grab yourself a nice cold beverage, sit down and enjoy. Now, what is the bed bar? Well, the bed bar is this piece here. It's a cast iron piece, and this is what the bed knife attaches to. We'll take a closer look at that once we get it off. Step one on removing this, we have to loosen the reel to bed knife adjustment. To do that, let's see, I think it's, yeah, it's a 16 millimeter. We wanna turn these counterclockwise. This one took a whole lot more turns to get all the way loose versus this one. Reason behind that is I suspect the reel has took on a conical shape, which is normal. That happens over time. And the solution to that problem is you have to regrind the reel. Okay, we gotta pump the brakes for just a little bit here so I can talk about reel grinding again. There was some confusion in my last video, mainly talking about my advocacy for relief grinding, saying I was discounting spin grinding. Well, I wasn't. As I just mentioned, if a reel's on a conical shape, you have to have a spin grind performed on it to reshape the reel. I advocate for relief grinding because the manufacturers advocate for it. Turf professionals all over the world advocate for it. There's just a certain subset of people that don't like it and they just think a spin grind's fine. Yeah, a spin grind can get you by. It has a slight advantage over a relief grind of making the reel less susceptible to damage from hitting something in the turf. However, the relief grind provides so many more benefits, a better quality of cut, an increased efficiency of the whole process. You have less friction of the reel to the bed knife surface. You can back lap it a whole lot easier and faster. You can actually fix some real misalignment issues or things like that with back lapping on a relief grind, but really it boils down to efficiency. The relief grind allows you to run at lower RPMs, have a smaller engine size. If your maintenance costs are increased because you're saving a couple bucks on a spin grind, you're losing those dollars on oil changes, transmission fluid changes, and just your normal everyday kind of wear and tear items. You're having to do those more often because you're not cutting as efficiently as possible. And that's what we're about, efficiency. This efficiency also has a direct impact on the environment. And we have to look out for that because we're stewards of the environment. Okay, we can get back now to uh, taking things apart. I just had to uh, clear that up. Okay, back at it. Once these are loosened all the way, we have to back the tension off of these two nuts here. And this takes a 17 millimeter. There we go, tension is relieved. Okay, those are good. Next up, we have this here. There's a matching one on the other side of the cutting unit. There are some plastic washers back in here. Let's take a look. You can see right down in there, there's some more on the other side. These are very, very important. Don't lose them. Now these guys here take a 19 millimeter. And they will not be very tight. You just have to loosen. Oh, I skipped a step. Need to take this guy off. A half inch fits it, but everything on this is metric, so it's probably what the equivalent is. Okay, belt cover, we're gonna set that over here. Okay. 
Okay, those are loosened, now we need to remove these. So these get taken out, you loosen the 19 millimeter nut, then you have this here, this is a 10 millimeter. That is what you use to extract the whole bolt from the bed bar. Keep in mind, there is another plastic washer as long as a metal washer on this side that you do not want to lose. This one started, I'm gonna work on the other side now. Now these should not be overly tight. They should be really easy to take out simply due to this, ro this uh, that's its rotation point to adjust. Okay, so here we go. Metal washer, plastic washer, the metal goes against the bed bar. Then you have the reverse of this on the other side. So save all of those. So now we need to get the bed bar out. Let's see. Okay, there we have it. Ooh, it's been dirty. So here's the bed bar, cast iron. It sat in this way. This just holds tension with the adjustment screws, pivots on this point here. Then all these guys here are the screws for your bed knife bed knife attaches to that. Leaving the front roller on for now, it doesn't call for its removal just yet in the service manual. We need to start by removing this guy here. This is an 18 millimeter locking nut. This holds the left hand side of the reel on. There's a woodruff key inside this pulley here that you need to make sure you don't lose. We need to use wood put inside here to prevent the reel from turning. This is your normal threaded screw, right hand thread, I guess is what you call it. The other side's left hand thread. Oh yeah, that's strength. Okay, locking nut is off. Now we will slide this pulley out. And then, there it is. Don't lose this. We can take this belt and toss it. Okay, next up we need to loosen and remove these two guys here. They are a 15 millimeter. Which I'm gonna have to use something different for that guy. Let's hope I have it. Sure do. Okay, those guys are out. We also need to remove this guy. Let's see if it's the same size. Oh, it isn't. It's a 13 millimeter. We have that with a little lock washer. And then bam. This guy comes out and what does he refer to? Real drive plate assembly. And this is where we connect to the cutting unit. We're flipped around in the other direction. I've already started loosening these guys. If you remember from my video when I was setting up your mower for scalping, 16 millimeters. They're all hand tight right now, so I'm gonna take these guys out. And we need to loosen these front little retainers with a 10 millimeter. And we are actually going to take them completely out because I am not reusing these. The groomer is getting put back on and there is an entirely new set. Well, not a new set, they're there, but they're an entirely different set of height of cut arms. And these existing arms are not compatible with a groomer. We gotta take these guys out as well. Next up, we have to remove the counterweight. If you get one of these mowers from auction, and it has a groomer already, and you wanna take it off, you will not have this piece, you'll have to buy it. It's like 50 bucks. Woo! This is held on with some 15 millimeter nuts. You have to buy these too, cause uh, you don't need them when you put the groomer on. So we're gonna save them. And there we go, the counterweight's off. This guy weighs like a good like 10 or 15 pounds. He's a, he's a heavy fella. This would suck to drop on your foot when you're wearing flip flops, like I am. 
So counterweight is removed. Let's move on to the next step. Oh, next up is the real bearing lock nut. This is another component that if you have a groomer and you are taking it off to not use and go back to a standard, your standard setup, you have to get one of these too. And to take this off, 34 millimeter. Get you one of these, get you a little an adapter doha, and something to put on your impact gun. Now this is a reverse thread. We need to get our wood blocks again. Bam! Look at that. Easy peasy. This piece here is considered the real bearing housing. We will not reuse these, nor will we reuse these bolts here. Those get replaced with some shorter bits and these are 17 millimeter. We have another set of these that have to be removed on this other side. Gonna have to use some penetrating oil on these. These have never been removed by me, so we need to give them a reason to move. And that was totally not penetrating oil, that was just some silicone. We're back. I have some gloves on now because things are getting greasy, Julian. We got these two tapered nuts. Got this spacer guy. This is why I'm wearing gloves. Now we gotta get the real bearing housings out. I have the wood that I used for <clears throat> stopping the wheel from turning down underneath to prevent it from dropping. Don't wanna damage anything. Gonna use a screwdriver to get in here and slide it out. Then we can take a look at it and see what it looks like. So here it is, here's one of them. This is a little brass piece that's supposed to come off, but we have to clean this guy up, get it all apart, and get all these bearings out. Oh, I ripped the gloves. I'm supporting the reel, keeping it even. Make it easier to take out. There we go. Loosen that guy up. And having a little bit of a hard time. Okay, there we have it. Here's the other one. Now we need to focus on getting the reel taken out. One of these side pieces may need to come off. Don't worry though, it's not the same side piece that's in the backyard, or side yard, sorry, side piece. I'm trying to figure out how to do this without taking one of these off because I don't feel like dealing with that. I may have to though because these pivot arms are in the way take this top bolt out of this one, there should be enough play where I could remove it from the top. Let's find out. There is not. Ho oh, oh, ho, that hurt a little bit, but there we have it. The reel is out. Getting the reel out wasn't that hard. The biggest trouble was actually the reel bearing housings. Man, that one I just, I had to fight with forever. In the next video, we're gonna look at those reel bearing housings a whole lot more. We have to get the old bearings and seals out of there, get the new bearings packed full of grease, new seals greased up and everything put back together. Right now, I think that will be the entirety of the next video, but the reel may get installed as well. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. So I hope you all really enjoyed part number two. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when part three comes. So with that, hey, we'll see you again really, really soon.